Hi, I'm Kim Saito Campbell. Most of my students call me Dr. Kim. I'll tell you more about myself in just a few minutes, but first I want to introduce you to TECM 5191 so that you have a better idea of what this course is about, what you can expect, how it's going to work. So let me give you the official description. It's an examination of the digital literacies used in professional contexts intensive theory and practice of authoring tools, content management, single sourcing, and coding. That's all accurate, but in my own words, what I would say is we're going to focus on those digital literacies that surveys have told us are most important to professionals in TechCom most recently. So to complete the course requires that you move through eight modules of content. I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. This video lecture presents the course objectives, it describes the major assignments and the philosophy of learning that's behind them, and it also helps you get to know me a little bit. So let's start with the goals of the course, all of which are designed to support you as you develop critical digital literacies needed by professionals. The first objective is for you to better plan for the future by focusing on your strategies for developing new digital literacies. You'll learn a framework for those reflections in Module 1. The second objective is for you to learn to use the five digital literacies listed on this slide. Not only to use them, but also to understand their roles in TechCom. The third objective is for you to apply your knowledge of those digital tools and techniques from the previous slide in course assignments that involve the tasks listed here. I'll say more about these in a minute. So before I list the specific assignments, I want to make sure you understand the workload in the course and especially how best to manage it. I hope you learned what to expect in an eight-week grad course when you were admitted into one of our programs, but I want to make sure. You earned three credit hours for completing this course in eight weeks. Here's some background you may not know. In the U.S., universities that receive any fun universities that receive any federal funds at all use this definition of credit hour. One hour of classroom or direct faculty instruction and a minimum of two hours of out-of-class student work each week for approximately 15 weeks. So what that means is a three credit hour course must include at least three hours of instruction plus six hours of out-of-class work for 15 weeks. That's a total of 135 hours. If we divide those hours over eight weeks instead of 15, we get 16.87 hours per week. The good news is, in TECM 5191, I've assumed your workload every week is a minimum of 10 hours. I've carefully considered how you should allocate those 10 hours to perform best in the course. You'll find that information for every module in Canvas in the Start Here module overview. When you open that overview, you'll see a date and time by which I recommend you view the information. There's a brief description of the main topic for that module. That's followed by a list of learning objectives for their specific module. And then finally, there is a weekly to-do list for each module. This will include every activity you should be engaged in. It doesn't always mean these are graded activities. The to-dos are divided into midweek. That means Sunday at midnight to Thursday at midnight, and then end of week. So that's the rest of the week from Thursday at midnight to Sunday at midnight. Each to-do is connected to the module's learning objectives and ends with a recommended time allocation for that week. For example, I recommend that you spend two hours 
reading or watching the instructional materials by midweek in Module 1. If you find yourself spending far more time on an activity than I've indicated in the overview, please contact me so I can help you figure out why or where you're losing productivity. You should expect to spend 10, but not 20 hours per week on the course activities. This table lists the major assignment categories in the course, along with the learning objectives for the course that they support and the way in which each of them contribute to your course grade. You'll build a portfolio website that includes some blog posts as well as other content using WordPress. You'll collaborate with others in the course and then write modular content and publish it using single source principles with Madcap Flare and Central. You'll produce a quick start guide as a screencast with Camtasia and you'll complete several additional activities that support those major project assignments. You'll find details about every assignment on Canvas, and that includes the criteria by which I judge your performance. I think it's only fair I explain a little about my teaching philosophy. That way, you can better understand the goal of assignments in the course. The foundation of my philosophy comes from work done by a researcher named David Kolb and his wife Alice. They studied how adults learn at work. What they found is captured in something called Kolb's experiential learning cycle. The fundamental insight here is that learning happens through multiple cycles, and never occurs in a straight uphill climb. Many people believe you have to choose between experience or theory when you want to gain knowledge or skills, but the choice represents a false dichotomy. Let me explain with an example. Let's say you're a swimmer and you want to learn to compete in the 100 meter butterfly. You enter an event, have an actual experience of competing, you place fifth. If you quit now or you just keep entering more races, you won't learn that much. You've got to continue to the next phase of the learning cycle for learning to take place. After your experience, you have to think back on the race. What exactly happened? Reflecting on your experience is necessary if you're committed to learning, but if you get stuck in reflection, you're not going to learn much. You've got to advance to the next learning phase. In that next phase, you might talk to your coach who theorizes. Maybe you lost time at the start and your turn technique slowed you down during the race. He explains why and how you might change your technique in order to be faster. The coach's idea is only theory unless you advance to the experimentation phase of learning. You get in the pool, you try out some new turn techniques, you do some drills for getting off the block more quickly, get some practice. But if you stop with experimentation, you won't know what you've learned yet. Instead, you have to start over with the first phase again. You compete in another race and have a new experience. You might win or not. If you're serious about learning, you'll keep repeating the cycle by reflecting on the most recent experience and theorizing why things happened the way they did. What does this mean for my students in TECM 5191? Well, first, the assignments I planned will require you to move back and forth between thinking and doing. You're probably more comfortable with one of them, but quality of both matter for learning. Second, I believe learning is a cyclical process, not an outcome. If you focus only on grades, that's an outcome, you'll be frustrated and you won't learn as much. Third, I expect you to take risks, which will make you uncomfortable. Sometimes you'll fall down. Failure is necessary for learning. I'll do all I can to make it safe for you to fail. Finally, it's an advantage to have a coach to guide you through the learning process. That's my job. I'll give you as much individual coaching as I can, but there are limits on what any individual can offer. So I'll ask you to coach each other. That should lead to deeper knowledge too. Let me close this introductory lecture by helping you get to know a little bit about me. I'm assuming you know that I'm at UNT, 
In 2016, I joined the university as a professor and chair of the tech comm department. But here's a brief professional history leading up to that date. My lifelong passion for language eventually led me to grad school to study linguistics and technical writing. While I was in school in the late 1980s, I worked as a technical editor. I earned my PhD from LSU in 1990 after completing a dissertation that was research on applications of discourse analysis to professional writing. My first job as a professor was in the English department at Auburn University. In 1992, I began work as a professor and researcher at the Air Force's postgraduate school. 1997, I joined the business school at the University of Alabama, where I stayed for 19 years. During that time, I served as the editor of an IEEE research journal for more than 10 years. While at Bama, I also had some administrative positions. And as I said, in 2016, I joined UNT. On this slide, let me provide a little history about my own digital literacy journey. I was the first doc student to get permission to complete my comprehensive exams on a PC way back in 1989. I was the first English professor at Auburn to get an email address. I was the first Air Force researcher to use qualitative research software back in 1995. I built the first website for the management department at the University of Alabama. I was the first editor at IEEE to require the use of track changes in the process of publishing research manuscripts. I was the first business school professor at Bama to start video capture of my lectures and later to begin blogging and sharing on social media. And finally, I was, I think, the first tech comm professor at UNT to require students to produce screencasts. The point is not that I'm the most technically proficient professor or technical communicator because I'm not. The point is that new digital tools appear constantly. I've had to learn many new ones over the years. You will too. So at this point, you know a little bit about the course, its objectives, the kind of assignments you're going to do, the philosophy behind them. You even know a little bit about me. At this point, I say let's get going.